Yeah. We can't afford to lose one day if we're going to get through the Sierras before the first snowfall. If that friend Caleb yours doesn't come up with 50 good head of horses, we won't make it that far. I'm not worried about that. According to this letter he mailed me last spring, we can have all we want, $10 a head. One reason I took the northern route this year. Here you are, Mr. Chris. Thank you, Charlie. Well, Bill, I don't have to tell you this is getting dangerously close to the bottom of the emergency fund. $500 there. Well, I'll be careful. Anything else? That's about it, I guess. Except don't forget to give my love to Grace, Johnny's daughter. You know, we were practically engaged one time. I think she's about nine at the time. Nine years ago. That'd make her about 18 now. You know, if uh, she hasn't changed her mind, shall I tell her you're still waiting? <laughs> all I'm waiting for is horses, all 50 of them. Well, see you later. of our heart, shall not thy merciful ears to our prayer, but spare us. Lord most holy, O God most mighty, suffer us not at our last hour, or any pains of death, to fall from thee. right now, Miss Grace? Yes, I, I think so. Oh, Grace? I think we should be going. If you don't mind, Naomi, Tom will drive me home. Of course, dear. Go right along.
I'm John Kaler's daughter. If you're a friend of his, I... Well, I never had the privilege, but the man that sent me did. I'm Bill Hawks from the Chris Hill Wagon Train. Pa said Mr. Hill was going to be passing through this year. Just as near as Benson's Fork. Of course, if Chris had known about this, he would have come himself. You set quite a store by your father. Why were you sent, Mr. Hawks? Buy horses. See, the wagon train's in real bad shape. I have a letter from your father saying that we can buy all the horses that we need. But I don't uh, think this is the place to talk about it. We'd better get back to the ranch. I don't know what Pop promised you, but whatever it was, we'll keep his word, just as he would have done. Thank you. Suddenly, it's our day. Thanks, Tom, for everything. Glad I could help, Miss Grace. I'll take care of your horse, Mr. Hawks. Thank you. Just pouring Mr. Blucher a drink. Oh, well, uh, thank you, ma'am. Uh, I needed that. What happened to Pa's picture? Oh, well, I, uh, it's hard to explain, but I, I hope you understand. I mean, it's been such an ordeal for all of us, and realizing that just a moment ago we left him out there, uh, well, I, I thought I'd put it away for a day or two. Well, I'm, I'm sorry. This, this is Mr. Hawks, a friend of Chris Hale. Mr. Hawks, my stepmother. How do you do, Mr. Hawks? My pleasure, ma'am. And this is my foreman, Carl Blucher. Mm. I hate to intrude at a time like this, Mrs. Kaler, but can't be helped. Mr. Hawks has a letter from Pa. I mean, it was written last spring. If it's a job you want, we already have extra hands. I've got a job, buying horses for the wagon train. Your husband made a deal with Chris Hale to sell us all the horses we might need. Well, I'm sorry, I, I have... No mind for these matters. I'm simply helpless where business isn't concerned, and I have to rely entirely on Carl's judgment. If you'll excuse me, please. Surely. Uh, that letter, uh, let me take a look at it. can't go along with this. Don't you have 50 horses? Not at $10 a head, I don't. Got to get twice that or don't pay to round them up. John Kaler thought the price was fair. Well, that was last spring. Uh, situation's different now. Carl, Pa gave his word. Your father was an old man. He was sick when he wrote this letter. No, at this price, uh, Mr. Hawks is going to have to get his horses somewhere else. You know that there isn't a horse ranch within 100 miles of here. It's not fair, Carl. What do you say, Mr. Hawks? Five hundred in gold. You get the rest of them, and you deliver the horses to Benson's Fort. And I'll be glad to oblige. Take two or three days to round them up. There's accommodations in the bunkhouse. Oh, thanks for that. At least you tried, Grace. Oh, this is wrong, Carl. 
Pop promised them. If he wanted $20 a head, he'd have said so. The ranch belongs to Naomi. She's the boss now. And she expects me to run it at a profit. Even if it means breaking Pa's word? Even anything you like. Carl. You may come in now. All the way from Paris. And a perfect match with this. Beautiful dreamer. La -da -da -dee. <laughs> I've had it hidden for two years. Even you didn't know. Pretty fancy for widow's weeds. Well, then it's time you started cashing in on all that wasted time. $500, courtesy for Mr. Bill Hawks. And 500 more waiting for us at Benson's Forks as soon as we deliver 50 horses. Is that the best you could do? Well, the fact is, it's twice what they're worth. Oh, it'll take a lot more than that. It'll take all the money this dismal ranch can bring to buy me the world I've been waiting for. Oh, I have a heap of living to catch up on. Naomi. Suddenly, I get a strange feeling. All you've been talking about is yourself and what you're going to do with the money. Oh, really? I wasn't conscious of that. Well, we always planned about us. But now it seems I'm suddenly out of your thinking. Oh, dear, Carl, how can you say such a thing? Why do you think I married a man 30 years older? Simple. He was rich. Oh, it was a lot more than that. Because his doctor said that he had a year to live, maybe two, because he needed a mother for his darling little daughter. And because with his money, I dreamed of studying in New York, in Paris. Oh, I dreamed of becoming another Jenny Lind. How oh, I loved to sing. Until two years ago, when it looked as though John Cayley was going to live forever. Well, smart to keep up appearances before the will is read. Don't be concerned with a mere trifle. After all, John is hardly in a position to do anything now. standing here for more than an hour. I was kind of hoping you'd come out. I wanted to tell you that I liked your pa an awful lot. He was always good to me. More like a father than a boss. I'm going to miss him, too. Thanks, Tom. He would have liked to hear that. I'm sorry if I upset you. If you'd rather be alone. Oh, no, please don't go. I... If you'd like to stay a spell, I... Well, I once heard a man say that feeling lonely was just another way of going hungry. But it's different for you over there in the bunkhouse. You have all the other hands to talk to. It don't always work out like that. We don't have much to talk about. So you might as well be all by yourself. <sighs> Gosh, I don't reckon I said this much to anyone the whole ten months I worked here. I'm not much for talking. And here all along, I thought it was my fault. I mean, oh, Tom, I don't know what to say. Well, now, I might as well confess, Miss Grace, I've been wanting to talk to you lots of times. You have? Uh, well, I guess I shouldn't have said that. I, I'm not much good at hiding my feelings. Well, why should you, Tom? Well, I, uh... I've still got a couple of chores to do before supper. Better go do them. Good night, Grace. Good night, Tom. So I explained to John 
What's the use of money if not to buy the better things of life? Take this lovely pastry service, for instance. Oh, I can't tell you how long it took me to persuade John to send directly to London for the entire service. It's a work of art, isn't it, Mr. Hawkes? Well, I'm not much of a judge of silver, Mrs. Scaler. We don't set a fancy table like this on a wagon train. Neither do we, usually. Quite right, Carl. Just on special occasions. Naomi, how can you say such a thing? Well, it's a question of hospitality, Grace. I was referring to the presence of Mr. Hawkes. After all, he is our guest. I'm sorry that I couldn't have come here on happier circumstances. So do we, but life must go on. There's no use brooding about the past. Well, the way I look at it, John had no complaints. He got more out of life than most men do. What kind of people are you? Here my father was only just buried this morning, and you act as if nothing happened at all. It's as if this were a, a party or, or a church social. Oh, you're putting the wrong interpretation on it, Grace. He was your father, but after all, he was my husband for nine years. But all this so soon. Perhaps I knew your father better than you did. He wouldn't want me to be wearing black or living black just because he passed away. I just know you couldn't have loved him like I did. Oh, my poor dear. What do you know about love, child? How can you possibly know what is said between husband and wife in their private moments? But one thing you do know, he loved me enough to will me this Raj, but he thought of you, too, with a dowry of $20,000, or you have no trouble catching a man. I don't need to be told I'm not pretty. Maybe I will have to buy a man. But if my husband died, I wouldn't flounce around in such a fancy dress. That's enough. John Kayla's dead, and I'm alive, and I intend to live. Oh, well, now she's upset me. Oh, I'm so ashamed for our guest. My apologies, Mr. Hawkes. She's so young. Oh, do pay no mind. It's just a little family misunderstanding. It's all right, Mrs. Kayla. But I'm not a guest. I'm here on business. And if you don't mind, I could use a little fresh air. Mr. Hawks, what are you doing here? I don't mean to intrude, ma'am, but I figured this is where you would come, seeing that you didn't even have time to saddle your horse. Looks like your father was kind of a sanctuary to you. Seems like he still is. How could you know? You're just a stranger. Maybe. You know, a lot of people on a wagon train don't know one another. But you'd never know they were strangers when someone needs help. Pa was a large man, Mr. Hawks. He was taller than you. When I was a little girl, after Ma died, he would take me walking in the woods. He used to hold my hand, and when I'd look up at him, he, he was as high as a mountain. And he used to show me the, the wild berries and explain how they blossomed. And then one day, we saw a newborn chipmunk. He could hardly walk, and, and Pa picked him up and let me hold him. Goodness, how I talk. It's good medicine for you, young lady. You know, you hold on to those memories, you'll come out all right. Now, I got a hunch that your Pa just heard everything you said. Somehow, some way, he'll take care of you. Sleep and I'll put the horses away. Oh, thank you. Thank you so much, Mr. Hawks. underestimated my stepdaughter's charm. We all make mistakes, Mrs. Keller. But don't tell me you waited up just to tell me that. Oh, of course not. I 
I was worried about her running out like that. But I should have known she was in perfectly safe hands. I mean, she's, she's my responsibility now. I, oh, I worry about her future. If only there was some prospect of marriage. She was only 18. And the way you pointed out, maybe the uh, $20,000 will do the trick. I deserve that. It was thoughtless of me to say such a thing, but I've never been able to communicate with her, even when her father was alive. Why do you tell me this? Well, I, I don't know what you and Grace were talking about, but, but I do know you're a friend of Chris Hale's, and, well, he's a friend of my husband's, and, uh, and he'll naturally want to know what's happened here. He'll be interested to know, all right, especially when I tell him the price of the horses. I'm sorry, but I can't help that. Cow showed me where our ranch was losing money. I, charity does begin at home. Well, I'll tell him. Is there anything else? Yes, there is. There's no reason now for me to play games with you or anybody else. Soon this estate will be settled and I'll sell the ranch and go away. Europe, perhaps. Tell Chris Hale that my husband was the kind of man who always got what he wanted. Oh, what a Romeo he was. How persistent. He said that my voice would brighten up this gopher hole. Well, tell Chris Hale that John Kaler said he only had a little while to live, but he didn't keep his end of the bargain. Yeah, he'll do, Tom. Yes, sir. How many does that make? 27 so far. Now, you still owe me 23. You're kind of particular in your choosing, aren't you, Mr. Hawks? The kind of horses you want will take two more days to round up. And I'll wait. Well, what about the bunch I showed you at sunup? It's like I said before, they're not good enough. That's Carl's way of relieving his tension. And he's always sure that he doesn't run out of whiskey bottles. At $20 a head, I'll do my own picking. You set the price, but I'll set the standard. Good morning, Mrs. Taylor. Carl? Why, Mr. Druton, he didn't expect to see you so soon. Well, ordinarily, I wouldn't have come so soon after the funeral, but circumstances have a way of altering our plans. Mm, they do indeed. Uh, Mr. Hawks, may I present Mr. Charles Druton, the family lawyer? How are you? How do you do, sir? Uh, would you like to go in the house? Oh, no, thanks. I won't stay long. I have an aversion to driving over the pass after sundown. I, uh... I thought you and Grace should have copies of John's will at the earliest opportunity. Oh, that's very considerate of you. I'll see that Grace gets her copy. Uh, but need you have gone to all this trouble? We're all familiar with the terms. I'm afraid you're wrong about that, Mrs. Kaler. You see, John asked me to make certain revisions in the original draft about two months ago. But he never said anything about it to you. Well, it probably wasn't very important. A few minor changes won't make any difference. Well, it's not that simple, Mrs. Kaler. The revisions are rather extensive. What are you trying to say, Mr. Truton? In the original version written three months after your marriage, Grace was to receive a dowry of $20,000. That bequest no longer applies. Instead, she will receive the bulk of the entire estate. Why, I never heard anything so vile. I, I don't believe it. Well, nevertheless, it's right there in black and white. As executor, I'm to hold it in trust for her. But John promised. All these years, he promised me that the ranch would be mine. He was a sick old man. He, he couldn't have known what he was doing. He was sick a long time. On the contrary, he knew perfectly well what he was doing. I have affidavits from two doctors to substantiate it. But it doesn't make any sense. There's no reason to cut me off without anything. He didn't cut you off, Mrs. Kaler. It's right there. May I? And to my beloved wife, Naomi, for as long as she cares to dwell in the house to which I brought her as a bride, I do hereby bequeath a sum equal to the full value of all the loyalty, fidelity, and devotion she has afforded me these past several years, a monthly bequest of 30 silver dollars. 30 pieces of silver. Will you see that Grace gets the other copy? But I, I don't know what to think. I. I can't think John would be so vengeful. 
He had a sister in Missouri. He, he used to send her money. He, he always said he'd take care of her. That's an odd coincidence. She died the very day we drew up this new will. John has no other folks. You and Grace are his only living heirs. Good day, Mrs. Kaler. missing is this, right back in its place. Oh, thank you so much. I've missed it terribly. I know you have. I was wrong to put it away, and I was wrong to say those things at supper. Forgive me, just a little. <laughs> but that's all in the past. Oh, all the sadness, all the weeping. Mm, we've only the future, and we must make plans. Aren't they pretty? Mm. I was just about to take them to the cemetery. The other ones must all be wilted by now. We missed you at breakfast. Well, uh, I, I was too tired. I, I hardly slept at all. Why was that? Uh, well, Mr. Druthen came by last night. Uh, you were asleep. He had some very important news for both of us. It was so late that I, I didn't want to wake you. But what did he say, Naomi? Unknown to both of us, your father changed his will two months ago. He left the entire estate to you. Here's your copy. Mr. Druden wanted you to have it. But, but what about you? Didn't he leave anything to you? Yes, he did. Read it, it's all there. Oh, Naomi, please don't be unhappy. As to the other, the estate, that will always belong to you as much as it will to me. Remember, no more sadness and no more weeping. You said that. I'll read that when I get back. Oh, I just had a terrible fright. I took some fresh flowers to Pa's grave, and, and the picture the old flowers were in fell over, and... and hey, now, wait a minute. Take it easy. The picture fell over, and a rattler came out of it. Out of the picture? How do you imagine it got in there? What would it be doing there? A pretty smarty. Might have been thirsty, or maybe just likes flowers. You're not hurt, are you? No, I, I feel much better. Oh, good. You know, that old rattlesnake was probably just as frightened as you were. Right now, he's making a beeline right back to where he came from. So if I were you, I'd just forget about it and not talk about it anymore. There's something else I want to tell you about. Naomi told me this morning that, that Pa's will had been changed, leaving the ranch to me. She told you this morning? Yes, she said our family lawyer, Mr. Druton, came by last night, and I was already asleep. So now Pa's word can be kept about the horses. Well, I want to thank you, Grace. You know, the people on a wagon train are really going to be obliged. 
Is everything all right, Grace? Of course. Why? Well, I came by to see him, but seeing you, I'd reckon you'd be at the cemetery. She's been there and back. What do you want to see me about? Well, it's uh, more to apologize than anything for our differences in business. Can't blame a man for trying his best for his boss. We'll give Mr. Hawks the best horses we have, Carl, at the price that was promised. Well, the sooner we can round him up, the better. For him. Tomorrow, Mr. Hawks. Ninth when he's ten down. This rate he'll be here forever. I can't help it. You think he was buying racehorses? Oh, I've heard enough. Now you bungle the first job. Get rid of him. Well, they're not up to standard, Tom. They'll have to do. The best stocks at the Medicine Rock, Mr. Hawks. When I mentioned it to Mr. Blucher, he said it was a half day's ride and wasn't worth it. Any luck? Hmm. Well, you can forget about this bunch, Mr. Hawks. There are a lot better ones up at Medicine Rock. We'll shove off at sunup, Tom. Then you can fill your quota and get going. Like you want to. Very friendly of you. You know, when I was a boy, I could kill a jackrabbit on the run. Takes a lot of practicing. Hawks, I, I reckon you'll be leaving soon? Yeah, I guess so, Tom. Some on your mind? Well, I'm kind of all mixed up on account of how everything's changed around here. Well, you might say that the new ranch boss makes a tall difference. Well, now, that's about it, I reckon. I suppose it's natural for people, for someone, to change on account of getting rich. Oh, no, not everybody. Now, you take Grace, for instance. Not that we're talking about her, but you take her. She'll never change. Well, now, thank you, Mr. Hawks. Thank you. <laughs> Evening, Miss Grace. Isn't it beautiful tonight? My, look at that moon. You know, you're just about that age. You start noticing things like that. Oh, I... I notice lots of other things, too. You know, I, I'm going to miss you when you leave. Well, that's the nicest compliment I've ever had. 
And old Chris Hale's going to be a little bit jealous when I tell him about it. Seems as how you two are going to get married once. <laughs> Dad, you can tell him for me that I think I'm too old for him now. You know, there is one thing. There's a few items I'd like to pick up for the wagon train. There's a trading post nearby. I'd like to do it tonight. Yes, there's one about five miles toward town on the other side of the ridge. Well, I'd better wait till morning then. But there's an old Indian trail that cuts off about three miles of it. It's hardly ever used anymore. It's so rough. In fact, some places it just disappears. A stranger could easily get lost on it. Sounds like a good idea, do you? Think Tom could show me the way? No. I doubt if Tom's ever been on that trail. But I know it. Pa and I used to ride it often. I know every inch of it. You? In fact, I insist, Mr. Hawks. Let me just change into something warmer, and I'll meet you outside the bunkhouse in 20 minutes. The trail starts near there. You know, this doesn't seem quite right. I'm a stubborn woman, Mr. Hawks. Besides, you're my guest now. It's the least I can do. Here's the money for the horses. I completely forgot to turn it over to you. Oh, that's all right. I'm in a hurry. I'm going to the trading post with Mr. Hawks. Exaggerate. You think this is something? There's a sharp bend about 300 yards ahead that would scare a mountain goat. Well, it's pretty country. Don't worry. After the bend, it's pretty easy going. You got me in your hands, ma'am. Lead on. Riding her for two years, Pa picked her out himself. Well, it could have been a ground squirrel, a snake, or anything. It was as though something struck her. Well, she couldn't have gone too far. Let's go. survived that fall, Grace. What are you doing here? Well, I didn't expect to see you, Mr. I asked you a question. What are you doing here? Was this harness needed fixing? This harness needed fixing? Get back to your bunkhouse. All right, here's where your horse pooped. Don't see any tracks, snakes, or any other kind. just to try not to think about it and get some rest. Grace? I'll see you in the morning, Grace. Good night. Thank you. Are you sure you didn't see anybody? No. From what you told me, I think somebody tried to kill you. Tom, what can you mean? 
Oh, well, maybe I'm just talking. Well, you've done enough talking. Let him be, Naomi. I want to talk to Tom. He's only a hired hand. Now, what right have you got to frighten Grace like that? I'm not going to see anything happen to her, because I'm going to marry her. He's a fool. And what's more, he's after your money. Maybe. Grace, I, I've been wanting to talk to you, but not here. I, 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 I've been wanting to talk to you alone, away from everybody, where, where nobody can hear us. I heard you talking as you and Mr. Hawks rode into the yard. Well, that's what I wanted to talk to you about, but uh, it's not out here. thousand acres. I thought it was Grace. Get your things and get off this ranch. You're fired. I'm not leaving Grace. Not to the pair of you. Why did you do it, Carl? Why? Why? It won't work, Naomi. You can't fool him. Nothing more than we fool the old man. You have nothing to fear, Mrs. Kaler. You did a real good job covering your tracks. No jury would convict you on the evidence. Finish it. You may need it. I've seen Mr. Druton. He's drawing up new papers regarding the estate. You've convinced me how desperately you want the ranch. Well, you're going to have it. I'm giving it to you. As for me, I'm taking the dowry, and Tom and I are joining the wagon train to California. Mr. Druton said I can't legally turn over the property to you until I'm of age. If you've waited this long, I'm sure you won't mind waiting three more years. There's only one condition. You have to stay here and live here. If you try to sell one piece of the property or step one foot over the property line, it will all revert back to me. Not too late to change your mind, Grace. You know, it's a good thing that we got a working preacher on that wagon train. 